It's all come down to this. A moment in time that puts an exclamation point ending 50 years of playing rock and roll music on the radio. I did the math, and it comes out to nearly 975,000 songs, 170,000 hours behind a microphone. And along the way, I've given away about $5 million in cash and prizes. <laughs> it all started by accident when my high school English teacher invited me to see the radio station where he worked part-time on weekends. I went, and as the fates would have it, his newsman got sick. My teacher looked at me and said, you can read, you do the news. I called my mom, told her I was going to be on the radio. I was 17, usually got a D in penmanship, as most of the folks around here know, but did pretty well when it came to reading. It was a five-minute newscast. I read it over and over, almost had it memorized. Sat down at the table opposite my teacher, and when the record ended, he turned on the mic and said, Ladies and gentlemen, it's 9.55, and here's Jimmy Hummel with the news. In the deepest voice I could muster, I started to read. The biggest clock I had ever seen was on the wall opposite my seat, and I finished with 15 seconds to spare. My teacher filled to the top of the hour, and the station joined some network for a national newscast. I had done it. Didn't blow a single word I could legitimately claim to be a broadcaster. The station manager called, wanted to know who I was. My teacher told him that I was hired for a dollar an hour, that was the minimum wage back then, to read the news after school. Six months later, I witnessed the very first in a long series of disc jockeys being let go. He was the rock and roll guy, and there was nobody on the remaining staff who knew anything about rock music except me. Program director called me into his office for the first time of what would be many closed door sessions. The music director had picked the songs to be played that afternoon. There was a big stack of 45s on his desk and he said, here, take these into the control room. You are now a disc jockey. And the rest, as they say, is history. I knew as I drove home that day in my 54 Ford stick shift, listening to my new radio station, I had just stumbled onto my life's work. Sitting in a room alone, talking into a little machine and hundreds and thousands, maybe even millions of people, would be listening along the way. 1956, rock and roll music was beginning to happen. Elvis was on the Dorsey Brothers TV show, and Ed Sullivan was waiting in the wings, ready to fire the shot that would be heard around the world. No books to read, no classes to take. There were very few experts in the rock and roll radio business back then, and strangely, by the standards of the day, the few that were making it happen were pretty young, very young, kind of like me. They weren't burdened with that, here's how we used to do it mentality, because nobody had ever done what we were doing. The soap operas, which were the mainstay of business, uh, radio business for all those years, had fallen victim to this new thing called rock and roll music. Radio stations all over the country had bitten the bullet, changed their formats, and hired screaming kids to host their shows. Stations that were literally nowhere in terms of audience ratings vaulted to the top of the heap in just weeks. It was a whole new way to do radio, and there I was, ready to be part of it. I knew there were dues to be paid. I did my time in Omaha, Nebraska, Denver, Colorado, before coming here to South Florida in 1960. And this was paradise. I decided then and there that whatever I was going to do with my life, it would be done here. And so it has. And today we come to the end of a chapter, but not the end of the book. In a career that saw me shake hands with the Beatles and sit in the back seat of a blue F-18 fighting just under the speed of sound over the Everglades with the Blue Angels, the thing I will always cherish the most is my involvement with Magic Children's Fund. I'll never forget those 44,000 letters from the kids in South Florida we delivered to kids in Oklahoma City in 95. And since I joined the Magic Children's Fund and became president, we've raised and spent over a million and a half dollars helping needy kids in South Florida. Bought them bikes, paid tuition so they could learn to play a musical instrument, got airplane tickets, booked reservations along with an entry fee so one of our own could show his stuff at the National Science Fair. Guess what? He won. Paying the rent for a single mom whose child support didn't come in this month. She's having a tough time making ends meet. We bought one family the very first Christmas tree they ever had. And helping Santa to do his things with Toys R Us certificates. Touching the lives of these children at a very special time of need is a privileged memory I will take with me always. As you come in the front door to my home, the first thing you see is a painting of a young boy, five, six years old maybe. He's facing away from you, both hands in the back pockets of his jeans. He's looking out over the ocean, and the inscription reads, Priorities. A hundred years from now, it will not matter what my bank account was, the sort of home I lived in, or the kind of car I drove. But the world may have been made a better place because I touched the life of a child. I plan to continue working with the Magic Children's Fund and doing public service for Magic. And so we now come to the end of this road. I've always said that rock and roll music has a song for every occasion. This one is no exception. The year would be 1964. The artist, Mr. Roy Orbison. It's over, it's over, it's over. It's over. 
One more time, I say thank you. God bless you. And goodbye. Good night, my love. Pleasant dreams. That wasn't bad, huh? Sleep tight, my oh, thanks. love. <laughs> May tomorrow be sunny and okay. bright. Thank you. And bring you closer to okay. me. <laughs> yes, sir. Before That's what you go, please remember I need you so. And this love that I have for you will never grow cold. <laughs> I'll just come and run around. <laughs> if you yeah. should awake in the still of the night, please yeah, that's what I hear. have no I hear. fear, <laughs> for I'll be there, <laughs> you be know I care. <laughs>